Yeah, well, that seems to have corrected itself in the centre of town um, this week. I don't think it was ever quite as bad as the media made out. I mean, I live just north of Oxford Street, and while it did seem a little quieter, it seemed to be the same as it normally does during the school holidays. Um, having said that, you know, we did have some retailers who were, were reporting low footfall, all the rest of it. This weekend, though, uh, the West End are saying they've seen a sort of sixteen percent increase in footfall on what they normally see. Friday, the Tube carried a record number, four point two one million. Uh, passengers thing, which is the most they've ever done, um, and lots of areas of the city are reporting more people. So I walked from Westminster on Friday. I walked from Westminster to City Hall along the South Bank. It was completely rammed. So I think everybody's kind of happy now. Um, <clears throat> you know, we are seeing some of the bonus, and of course, a lot of those people will stay on uh, through the next couple of weeks as well, have a bit of a holiday too, and do their shopping afterwards. So we we've um, pulled some of the messaging around don't come into London because it's going to be too busy because the transport system seems to be coping now. And London Apartments, critically, which is our promotional arm, is advertising key markets now across the world, uh, illustrating to people that London is still open, particularly for tourism and particularly for business, and they should, think, they should still think about coming. Well, it's absolutely critical. I mean, look, London is a mercantile city. We've always survived on international trade, and I think that you know the benefit from the games will be twofold. Um, first of all, you know we know that there's about five billion of the spending on the Olympic Games has been accessed by small businesses. You know, we set up Compete for specifically so that small business could get involved in the in the contracting there, and that's been a big uh, success. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, people coming to the games from overseas and indeed domestically are small business people themselves. So, trying to make those kind of connections, I would encourage people. I mean, we have a business lounge here at City Hall. People are welcome to register, come and hang out there, connect with some of the businesses. I mean, I <clears throat> just happened to be at the beach volleyball last Saturday night. I'm sitting next to a guy. Uh, we just start chatting. Turns out he's the managing director of the largest furniture manufacturer in the world, um, and he'd come over for the games and. I talked to him about setting up a European HQ in London and he seems keen and we're in correspondence now. So there are those accidental meetings um, which uh, uh, you know, businesses can have. And the third thing I would say is they should capitalise on the great image of London. You know, beamed around the world has been this incredible spectacle of a city that is really performing at the top of its game. Uh, but more than that, it's an exciting, interesting, vibrant, creative place. Um, and that, I think, opens a lot of doors around the world. So we should not, even small businesses, be shy about foreign trade. We can help at City Hall. We will get in touch with those London and partners, UKTI, whatever. It's not just about big business. We will do what we can. And hosting programs like today, events like today, is part of that. Well, we were dealing with very old legislation, and um, I do think quite a high proportion actually have had their money, certainly of the uninsured. Um, I think there has been a bit of a problem with the insurance industry, um, and in that situation, you know, government, which has been handling it really, is sitting behind insurers who should be paying the insured. Um, and I think the problem is the insurers, as usual, the insurance industry are taking their time on paying it out and trying to match it with their negotiations with the government about recovering some of the money. Um, if there are any businesses who have been caught, I apologise on behalf of the government, but frankly, sometimes it's the insurance industry getting in the way. The people I come across now say that the, the system was painful to get their money, but most people, I think, have largely been paid now. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the two big areas of concentration are, of course, Tottenham and Croydon. And in those areas, the mayor has you know, task forces that are looking at spending money, particularly around uh, you know, uh, urban regeneration projects. So that's the infrastructure, the, the, the streets, the shops, making them smarter and, and repairing them. But also looking at transport links. Are they good enough? I mean, Croydon has very good transport links, Tottenham not so much. How could we improve those? And then also looking at some of the social uh, side of it, the sort of softer human architecture. So uh, skills um, and training programs, spending three million pounds in Tottenham on kicking off some skills and training, as well as looking at, at kind of investment opportunities where we can steer and direct businesses to talk, think about investing there. Having said that, uh, we had an event this morning uh, talking about legacy um, of the games. One of the things that I'm quite keen for us to do is not to go off half-cocked and weave in some of the opportunities from the Olympic Games into both those boroughs. I mean, we have an exhibition in the building at the moment downstairs showing the opportunity areas in London, and a lot of people have been showing interest in investment in Croydon. So if we're going to steer some of that love their way, then we will do as well.